We are rolling. Good morning. Welcome back to the conversation. This is Midlife Crisis Activities. This is our lifestyles and pop culture webcast. Our daily shout out to the world. I'm your host, Patrick Russell. And over there is my very grateful to be a live producer, Veronica. Together we're here to lend our voices to the noise from a multi-generational perspective to help explain everything that's right and wrong in this world. Good day to you, Veronica. Tell me, how happy are you to have another day in this world? You know, now that... We are here. I can say with a smile on my face, I'm grateful. And uh, Patrick is going to tell you guys why. But yeah, it was pretty, um, pretty We had scary. a hair raising experience yeah. on our flight back. We were on American Airlines 4245 coming back from Phoenix to Long Beach. And it was designated a flight emergency right now. Is this the first flight emergency that you've ever been a part of? Yep. Oh, I could yep. see it on your face. I could see it on your trembling hands and your knocking knees. I was shaking. Oh, she was shaking. Now, what had happened was is that uh, the pilot came on to the speaker. Attention, in-flight cabin. We have been designated a flight emergency. What this means is that we're going to be taxi to the longest runway that Phoenix Sky Harbor has. That's yeah. runway number two. Uh, the entire airport has been shut down and they're going to be accommodating us. What it is, folks, is that there's an indicator going off and it's suggesting uh, that the parking brakes are still on. And now let me explain to you when you calm you guys down. Uh, we believe that this is simply just a faulty indicator that light is just not turning off. That's what we strongly believe. However, we have to follow, you know, those FAA, those pesky FAA protocols. And mind you, I was half asleep at the time, uh, but and then uh, I, I heard some something and I'm like, wait a minute. So it got me like in the middle of my sleep and then kind of like waking up. Absolutely. So that was, was not good. A textbook rude awakening, no doubt. So yeah. the pilot goes on to say, so they're going to have to uh, deploy the EMTs and the fire trucks. Now, listen, folks, if this does turn out to be some type of mechanical failure, just understand this. What we believe will be the consequences is that when we touch down, we'll probably just pop the tires. Yeah. And he said it so calmly, and then it immediately thought to myself, well, finish the sentence. And he didn't finish the sentence. No. Uh, we'd like for you to just realize, to stay calm and to follow the instructions of your flight attendants. And we'll keep you posted as much as we can, and we'll be landing in about 10 minutes, right? Yeah. Now. My, mind you, the flight attendant was literally sitting in front of us. We got first class. So he was sitting in, in front of us and he was shaking. So by me, like looking at the flight attendants, I'm like, shoot, this is not right. Like he was literally like going like that, going crazy. I'm so glad that you said uh, our seats. I talked about our seats because so prior to that, I had actually gotten different seats. We were when we booked the trip, we were in like 9C and 9A. But because the upgrade, when I checked in the morning, the morning of yesterday, there was an upgrade of $47 yeah. to first class. Now, the reason why it was just a killer deal is because I was going to have to pay that for the baggage that you and I were yeah. going to have to check in anyway as coach. Yeah. So I'm like, done deal. Kills two birds with one stone. So we upgrade. Now, the reason why that was important is because not only were we were in first class, but we were in seat 1F and 1D. So even though I'm in the military and I've been on plenty of flights and some of them have kind of... Uh, had some technical issues that yeah. then required this flight emergency. And so I had been part of it once or twice before, but never. Right in, like you said, front <laughs> yeah. row. Not only could we see the flight attendant, it was really weird how the mind works. Where we sat right next to was a contractor. A contractor who at the beginning of the flight, when we were sitting down first class, like you said, uh, the flight attendant had come up and remarked to the contractor, oh, so the company's paying for this one. You're the guy that's checking the belt buckles, right? Yeah. And at the moment, it meant nothing to me, right? It was just in and out one year as we sat down. But the second we heard the pilot's announcement, I immediately instinctively looked to the guy that's worked on planes, knows about metals and alloys and how planes are constructed, and without missing a heartbeat, the man grabs his seatbelt and yanks at the tight. <laughs> yeah. And so you know what I did at that moment because you saw me yank my seatbelt tight and turn to you as calmly as I could and said, Veronica, please tighten your seatbelt. We're going to be fine, but you may want to tighten your seatbelt because it's going to get, what did I say, 
loud. Loud, if very it, loud. If what they're saying is true, imagine metal strut on pavement. And you can imagine how loud and ruckus that was going to be. So I wanted to prepare you for it. Now, believe it or not, I had seen this on TV once. I had seen this actually in Long Beach Airport about five or six years ago. I can't remember the flight, any of the details, but I remember seeing it on the local news. A flight having to come in and the front uh, landing wheels had boom, boom, popped. And so it was just a metal strut, you know, that one yeah. little stem. And it was cruising, sliding on the pavement successfully. And that plane ended up stopping. Now, imagine the world's best sparkler underneath that, uh, that strut as a landing ski. But I could see that they were constructed to work if everything had been checked. Now, remember, one small crack in any of the struts, any of the frames, any of the connections, if we had a popped... Uh, landing gear on yeah. pop tires. Oh, that could have gone sideways on yeah. us real quick, Veronica. So at the moment, I knew that I had to keep you calm. How calm was I in this emergency? I mean, you were pretty calm. I was the one shaking because, I mean, once you know that there's something wrong with the plane, whatever that is, but and then even, even I, I guess for me, what it kind of triggered my anxiety more, it was like seeing the flight attendant. The flight attendant um, who was strapped in like a jet pilot. He had his chest, uh, and, shoulder harness, his uh, and, rib harness, and his was tight too, and he was fidgeting. The and, whole time he was fidgeting. And then he was like, he was nice, and he was saying like, I think he was, uh, he's been working there for about two years, and he has experienced cases, similar cases like what we're experiencing, and he was literally like, nervous like i can see his eyes going like up and down and then i can see like his like his hands were shaking and i'm like shoot if he's scared imagine me so i was pretty scared and i oh, was yeah. and i was shaking and uh we always i always tell myself okay in, in a crucial situation i'm gonna be calm and i'm gonna be the one that helps oh my friends this is not the right person to have next to you because i was pretty yeah, scared the i was shaking it was definitely passing on those yeah. nervous and i mean what he was saying out of his mouth was right oh no everything will be fine Don't but he was not showing it. it with his body like you he know, was literally shaking you know I, 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 yeah, i've been through things like this before i'm sure it's just a faulty indicator as he's strapping himself down and just fidgeting and tapping his knee yeah. and his foot was going <laughs> up and down yeah it was like so he it was, was about to s s spell a word for his spelling yeah. bee and he was about to his turn to come I, up I, as I, how he was acting i think he was expecting the worst just because also I the, pi the pilots really was yeah the pilots the were like too. calling him like every second so in his mind like and then patrick and i drove to the house obviously from the airport we parked our car there and then patrick was telling me like all this uh i was it's, explaining it's, it's, to you exactly yeah. what kind of danger we and, probably were in and then also the cases that could have gone wrong right so i'm like that's why the the flight the flight attendant was very nervous because i mean anything could have happened so here was the period for the end of the sentence here's what sealed how precarious our situation was okay so once again we're in one f and one d right so we were able to see the initial reaction when the flight attendant unlocked the door and opened the door and immediately you know started with a joke hey guys we're great alive. landing we're happy to be alive and you could see from the reaction, the copilot pilot, it was like, dude, it's too soon. It's yeah. too soon. And the real other thing is, is that we were so close that we could see these two white pilots and they were pale. They you were could pale. see the paleness yeah. in their skin and that's saying something. So, you know, once I saw that, once I got into the car and realized that we had probably just, uh, you know, used up one of our nine lives on that yeah. flight back because uh, anything could have gone wrong and you saw it on everybody's face faces. Happy to be alive. Be grateful. You know, it just resets my gratitude to the universe. Uh, thank you for uh, a strong mind yep. and able body and the will to fight. Am I right? Yep. yep. Guys, please don't just subscribe to this channel, even though we will be doing this back and forth on a daily basis. But please use the comment box below. Lend your voices to the show. It will make it a whole lot more fun. Guys. Don't forget, no matter what comes your way today, no matter what obstacles or challenges you may face, you just need to remember one thing. You Give them hell. hell. Have a great day.